time that I make a strum on my banjo, like this. We're gonna have everyone clap their hands one time like this. Ready? And it goes like this. We are clapping to the rhythm. We are clapping to the beat. It is simple to begin and it is simple to repeat. But the song keeps getting faster with each verse that we complete. The tempo marches on. Well, I had always worked with children uh, and families, actually, and, uh, and my graduate studies were in child development uh, from the Erickson Institute in Chicago. Uh, and in particular, I studied play in particular, it was my area of specialty. Uh, and music, frankly, is the ideal way to get parents and children and caregivers and children and grandparents and children interacting together. Uh, and playing together. There's developmentally so many good things that happen <laughs> from that. As a matter of fact, the libraries have done a lot of research themselves, right? And they know that actually the key to reading, kids learning how to read, right, are families that play together, talk together, <laughs> sing together, uh, and of course read and write together. So music for me was just a natural way of getting everybody involved in that. My approach, because I'm not, I'm not a trained musician. <laughs> I sort of, I strum a little on the banjo. So I'm always making up games. Uh, and my, my belief, and frankly my studies, really tell me that young children, you know, they don't approach, they don't approach music the same way that, let's say, a teenager or adults do, right? Adults listen to music. Uh, teenagers listen to music, they consume music, you put on your headphones. Young children play music. <laughs> so, uh, so one of the nice things is about a finger play is that a finger play allows children to sort of, they're listening for the language. So as opposed to just a song being on and just, you know, bouncing the rhythm or whatever, they're listening closely for that language one of my finger plays today. The time has come, show me your thumb. Blah, blah. You know, but they're also, they start to listen for the rhymes. Next thing to do, pointers on two, you know, they, so they start to guess the rhymes and all of that stuff. Well, that has, apart from it being fun, <laughs> which it is, and children like, like games, but there's also so much developmentally that's going on. Listening to the, to the, regulating your movements based on the language and then listening for the rhymes and all of those things. Those are, frankly, developmental abilities they take on with them to school later on. Well, it's, it is hard to say, since I sort of, since I make them up, 
and they're, you know, my games. I like a lot of them. Uh, I have been singing that song, Alabama, Mississippi, since I was a teenager working at a summer camp, uh, which is a long time ago. Uh, and so I love singing that one. I love it because it gets everybody involved. It's such a simple, repetitive song. Shake, shake. And I love that. The other thing is my, one of the things about play is that it includes kids of all different, you can see it here, age levels and ability levels. Uh, so the thing about shake, 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 shake it baby. Years ago at the summer camp for kids with special needs that I worked at, a lot of kids in wheelchairs so you could shake your upper body parts. Uh, but, you know, little toddlers are shaking and, sh you know, so it's, it's inclusive for everyone. So that's a song that I've been singing for years that I love. I think in terms of songs that, that I make up myself, uh, I, I think I do love that. We must face the facts, our swimming arms are back. I, I just love all of the, I love the way that the parents get involved with it, right? How they kind of look back and forth with their little ones with the binocular eyes. So, so that's, I think, my favorite there. I will tell you that parents have already, they send me emails. The sweetest thing is, one, great thing about the library, my CDs and books are at the library. People can check them out for free using their library card. So from that, a lot of people listen to my music, uh, which is really wonderful. If you, if you make up songs and games like I do, you want people to be listening to them. <laughs> so I get emails from people that say, when, when you're, what's different about your music is, you know, some music we listen to or whatever, but with your music, a grandma sent me this. When my grandkids were over, we scooch the furniture back and we have a dance party in the family room, uh, which is so great. A mom sent me an email that said, I love that song you do, faster, 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 faster. She goes, we use that in the morning when I gotta get my kids in the van to get them to childcare. You know, we march out faster, 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 faster. So I think, I think that if the parents and again, caregivers and grandparents, everyone. If the adults that are that love the children get involved with the play, <laughs> one thing about a song like Alabama, Mississippi, you can't get it out of your head. <laughs> so if you get involved in the play, you figure out ways that you start incorporating it naturally into it, right? I mean, if you're gonna be going up the jump, 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 you know, you start all of those games, that it becomes, it almost as naturally, if you get started with it, right? So again, if you, if you get started playing the music together, as opposed to putting it on for the children, and thankfully, that's how people use my music. And I think it, a lot of that starts with story time <laughs> at the libraries, you know, that's how they, they demonstrate it that way.